Hey everybody, Natalie here on the east side of the Cascades to talk about redroot. Um, this is redroot, the redroot species Ceanothus volutinus. Uh, it has super waxy leaves. You actually might even be able to hear that. And the leaves actually have this very distinct almost pitchfork pattern where there's a central vein, but then there's also these kind of like, almost like three fingers like this. Um, and the bottom side of the leaves are pretty frosty and the top side of the leaves are green. And again, very thick and waxy. And they have a really specific smell. It's almost like creosote. Um, and you can actually, when it's really sunny, the smell comes out and you can actually smell it in the forests on the east side of the, of the mountains. So this is a pretty dry, loving plant. It has little branches like this. Behind me is the bush where this branch came from. We actually even see um, the flower clusters from earlier in the year. It has white flowers which I can put a picture of. Um, and this plant is really a fire ecology plant. So its purpose is to come in after a fire and stabilize the soil and fix nitrogen in the soil, which fires tend to deplete nitrogen. So it's basically kind of preparing and healing the forest. And then another fire comes through and fire frequency in this particular area, this is a ponderosa pine dominant forest. So we're looking at a fire frequency of two to 47 years versus on some of the west side forests, it's more like 100 plus years between fires. So a lot more frequent fires over here and the place where we are at in particular actually has literal charcoal on the ground. So evidence of recent fire. And <laughs> yeah, the red root bushes are absolutely everywhere. So this is a one we are going to dig up the root and yes, it is quite a difficult dig. And I'm gonna show you guys the root that we just dug up pretty large. It took five of us. We used um, digging forks and digging axes and we got in a little bit to get the root. Now uh, red root is called red root because the root is indeed red. So if we zoom in a little bit and we peel a little of this bark. You can see it's a little pinkish. Different roots are going to be different levels of red. So this one, if we scrape it off a little bit, is going to be real red over here. And so that is a sign of good medicine, but even pink bark is also really good. Um, you can use the stem bark of this plant, but keep in mind that the stem bark is good medicine, but the root has a, some compounds that the stem bark doesn't have um, that are, is gonna make it a little bit stronger medicine. So some of the you know, uses for infections and stuff, it's not, I think it's nice to have the root. Um, let's talk about the medicinal uses a little bit now that we've talked about ID and stuff. Um, this is a lymphatic herb, so we're going to use it in formulas for infections. Your lymph system is really important in infections to help filter the blood and filter out all the waste materials that infections produce in your body. Um, but it also can be used for like sluggish liver, sluggish spleen. Um, it's also used for enlarged liver and spleen historically, which is kind of wild. Um, you can also use it for things like um, cystic breast tissue. You know, obviously it's not gonna like cure breast cancer or anything, but it can help the lymph, lymph tissue in your breast to help clear stuff that's kind of stagnant. Um, and you can even pair that. So red root in small doses internally, like tincture, and then um, poke root oil topically as a combo can really help turn things around. And even in your pelvic area as well, um, for, you know, uterine stuff. So red root, I usually use the tincture because the tea, it's not very good and the dried plant isn't supposed to be as potent. So tincture is the best way to preserve the medicine. So we make it with fresh bark, which we're gonna um, brush it off and scrape off the bark of the root today, right now. And um, it's pretty strong, it's really astringent. It's, so it can be quite drying. So I just put a little bit in my formula, it's maybe 10% of the formula total, um, which is not that much. And if I'm taking it alone, I might even just take like five to 10 drops because you don't wanna dry yourself out too much um, and you can even get scrape off the bark of like the lower bush as well um, it kind of turns more and more red as it goes down towards the root and transitions into the red bark that we know red root for um, there's a lot more to say about this plant in fact one of them is these are nitrogen fixing nodules that I just found and that, so when I say that it fixes nitrogen, it's not actually the plant doing it. The plant hosts bacteria that take nitrogen from the soil and make it usable to the plant. And then the plant dies and it leaves more nitrogen in the soil and it also deposits, the living plant deposits nitrogen in the soil. So 
Um, Red alder does this as well. Red alder is kind of this, the version of this plant west of the Cascades. Um, and red alder is also lymphatic, which is interesting. So some parallels there, kind of exciting. Uh, that's all I have to say about redroot today. Feel free to share more about what you know in the comments.